Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I'm here with an SCP article. If you like the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if not, then I guess you're just here to watch something that you don't like. I hope you enjoy regardless. Today, we are going over SCP-610 also known as the flesh that hates. Let's get right into it. Item number, SCP-610, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment and Procedures. Due to the vast area of infection, SCP-610 covers areas in containment is impossible. Isolation of the area has moved far more effective, and permission has been granted by the Russian government to establish a perimeter to keep people out of these areas under the guise of military operations. Should any organism displaying traits is consistent with SCP-610 beside near this perimeter, then the established protocol requires it be engaged at range with small arms until immobile, then the dispatch using incendiary weapons and munitions set from as great distance as possible. Any living thing coming into physical contact with an organism infected with SCP-610 is considered expendable and is to be immediately terminated and incinerated. Any persons coming within 3 meters of SCP-610 and infected life are to immediately withdraw from the, um, the area, be isolated from the rest of their team, and subject to medical examination until using only remote te techniques to determine if infection has occurred or the appropriate steps taken based on that determination. At present, the known infection vectors for SCP-610 spread are, seem to be focused on physical contact. Drone movements within heavily infected areas have returned all sample have returned air samples containing minute articulates with which when exposed to organic compounds will result in the spread of SCP-610. The results of these particular tests have revealed that most require several days to manifest, if at all, with the exception of direct contact with exposed lung and liver tissue. These particular tests show a rapid rate of growth which require incineration of the testing environment no more than 24 hours after initial exposure, with even a two-hour mishap risking a compromised facility event. Given that this kind of rapid growth only occurs in organic material existing outside of the human body, this form of infection is currently considered a minor concern. These peculiarities have been given to rise to a series of questions regarding the possible origin of the infection in conjunction with the failed data expunge. Containment protocols remains at a scorched earth policy at this time, and no concern for transmission via water or air at infection parameters exists, barring situational changes in the field. <clears throat> Description Initial reports of SCP 610 came direct from the, gov from the Russian government through undisclosable channels. Hang on. Did I cover this before? Hang on, I'm gonna check something real quick.
Okay, we haven't gone over 610 before. I'm going to resume. The initial reports of SCP-610 came direct from the Russian government through undisclosed world channels. These reports consisted primarily of the experiences of farmers in the region and were not considered until the local police, followed by the regional police, and finally a government and dispatch agent all failed to report within a 72-hour period. A small military contingent was dispatched to the area and quickly withdrew, at which point the Foundation was contacted to investigate. The area 610 affects is close to Lake... Baikal in southern Siberia. Areas of known infection are marked on a map provided to us here. Let's send a new tab so we can actually see it. Hmm. <sighs> Containment parameters are marked in blue surrounding these infection areas. And as of present, no further locations have been identified. Incursions into the perimeter must be reported at prior to conducting, confirmed during exploration, and debriefed on immediately following return. SCP-610 appears to be a contagious skin disease at first, with symptoms including rash, itching, and increased skin sensitivity. Within three hours, the disease will cause blemishes resembling heavy scar tissue to form in the chest and arm areas, spreading to the legs and, and back within an additional hour, consuming the victim completely within five hours. Exposure to higher temperatures vastly decreases the time for the contagion and to spread and complete infections have been recorded occurring in as little as five minutes. After the completion of the infection occurs, the victim's life functions will cease for approximately three minutes, after which time they will start restart at least two to three times the activity rate of an, a normal human. Following this, the scar tissue on the victim will start to move of its own accord and grow at a rapid rate. Normal human feature starts to disappear at this point under the infection, and the path of mutation appears to be largely random. Subjects observed in this stage of infection have been recorded. And as growing three or more limbs of a type, such as arms or legs, the head may become misshapen and log in it or widen out, and parts of the subject may split open from which additional branches of flesh will grow. The duration of this stage of infection is unknown, and not all subjects appear to progress to later stages. Under unknown conditions, an affected individual will cease moving and place itself in a location it deems suitable where it roots itself. The fleshy growth on the victim will then begin to spread across all surrounding objects and consume them. Such objects do not spread the infection as living creatures do. However, the effect of prolonged contact with these objects is recorded later in this document. It is assumed that behavior is that this behavior is to create an area hospitable to continued growth of the other infected. Observation of life infected by SCPs extend. And, and by staff is impossible. Those infected with the disease immediately seek out, out aid as natural human impulses result in unintended in, in infections. Those infected pass the scar tissue phase actively and aggressively at attempt to infect anyone approaching them within an undefined area. It has been established that should infection and infected be capable of sight and observing un uninfected, it will proceed toward them. If the infected has lost the ability of sight of range by approximately 3 meters, it is considered safe. Observation of SCP-610 infected settlements have been established using artificial methods such as remote robots. <sighs> the data from these observations coupled with the openly aggressive nature of the infected to attempt to spread SCP-610 has resulted in the Keter classification. However, so long as nothing is allowed to enter or leave the infected areas, it is considered a neutralized threat. Of concern are the cavernous areas beneath the infected settlements that were discovered during the exploration and attempts to get research personnel into these areas are underway. Gonna <sighs> take a drink.
Now we have five field logs here. I hope you're ready for them. Because I don't think I am. I might have to do this in its own video. Yeah, I think that's going to have to be it for today's video. That was SCP-610. A... An infection that... Seems very much like the creation of a, a certain cult, given their obsession with disease and flesh. If you know who I mean, then you know I'm talking about the target cult. However, that is unconfirmed, and nobody knows for sure if that is actually the case. Whew. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if not, and I'm sorry. I'll see you next time with the field logs of SCP-610. Goodbye.